shooting 3D targets is not only fun, it's critical practice for the bow hunter. You want to learn the angle of penetration of your arrow in relation to the vitals. Shoot at different angles in your yard and you'll be a much better hunter out of tree stand this fall. Ground blinds are a tremendous hunting tool, but they're a little different shooting position. If you're going to use a ground blind this year, make sure you practice repeatedly out of a ground blind to get that shot down. A deer's eyes are especially created to detect movement. That's why a face mask and gloves are critical pieces of your camouflage, especially during the late winter when the leaves are off the tree and you can't hide in the shadows. Imagine watching your whole food plot every day without leaving any scent there. That's what the time-lapse feature on a good trail camera can do for you. Use that time-lapse in addition to your motion detector for better scouting. My most important mission when I go hunting is to return safely to my family. That's why I use a safety line when climbing in and out of my tree stand. Bring a huge trophy home to your family. Use a safety line and return safely. Deer don't like to go to the bubbling brook to get a drink because the noise and the scent rushing downstream defeats two of the predator defense mechanisms. Small, quiet water is a tremendous tool, especially during a drought. If providing minerals is part of your deer management program, make sure they're available year-round. Deer store minerals throughout the year and express that potential in the form of bigger antlers and healthier fawns. Minerals are part of my year-round deer management program. Big rubs are always a mystery to hunters. How often do bucks come check out these rubs? Simple way to test, just take a pencil, mark a little ring around the rub. Next time you pass by, see if that mark has been rubbed off the tree. Cover is a really hot topic among deer hunters these days, but some guys are establishing cover blocks like they do a food plot, an acre or two. That's just not big enough. Any coyote trotting downwind of a one acre cover block smells everything in there. When you're making cover, think big scale, 5, 10, 20 acres. Even if you own a smaller parcel of land, dedicate 10 acres to cover, your deer will stay home and your hunting will be better. Bucks that shed their antlers after January are usually in great health. Bucks that shed earlier or have a portion of the skull attached usually are injured or have a disease. Shed hunting is not only fun, it's a great way to monitor the health of a deer herd. Good natural mineral is like a vitamin for your deer herd. Some days we eat home cooking, we don't need our vitamin. Some days we eat fast food and we're missing a lot. Good natural minerals are a great insurance policy for the health of your deer herd. Fall or cool season food plots need to be planted about 45 days before the first average frost in your area. That gives them time to germinate and produce enough tonnage to really benefit your deer herd. Taking a soil sample out of your food plot and having it analyzed is just like the doctor taking a blood sample out of your arm and seeing the health of you. It lets me, as a biologist, see the nutrients available in the ground that are transferred through the crop to the deer herd. Nutrients are what makes bigger antlers and more fawns. So taking a soil sample and having it analyzed is an excellent way to check the health of your deer herd. You can learn a lot about where to hang your tree stand by splitting a little firewood. On the south slope, it's dry, sun hits it all day long, not as much moisture. The wood grows really dense, burns really hot, but the acorns are really small, more of a drought environment. On the north slope, grain is much wider, wood grows faster, more nutritious, less sunshine, bigger acorns where the deer are. Cut your firewood on the south slope, hang your deer stand on the north slope.